How important is that next step on rolling out this vaccine? Well, if we're going to get cases down from the tens of thousands that occur every day, we need to have more of the population vaccinated, more population level immunity. And as we get to children, the older ch child groups, 12 to 15, are uh, groups that are in extracurricular activities where you see them spreading it. So you will likely get a benefit uh, in terms of closer to herd immunity, more population level immunity, and decreased cases as we get 12 to 15 year olds. And it will help help some of those schools that have been holding out and not going to full in-person learning have less obstacles in their way to do it. So I think this is a good step forward. And I think we'll probably see even younger age groups approved, but probably not until 2022. Capacity is building out as well. Pfizer indicating they can manufacture at least 3 billion doses in 2022. Doctor, the problems of a couple of months ago are no longer the problems now. It's not about capacity or supply. In fact, this country is now talking about exporting some of their stockpile of vaccines. In your opinion, is the biggest issue that we have to confront right now still hesitancy? Yes, that's the biggest issue by far. We're basically hit a wall where we're seeing vaccines dip, you know, to 1 million and probably lower than 1 million. People who have gotten vaccinated, the early adopters, those are people who are really enthusiastic about the vaccine. Now we're kind of hitting that vaccine hesitancy, people on the fence, and there are people who are opposed to the vaccine. So we're kind of going at a much slower pace now. I think the Johnson & Johnson pause definitely uh, knocked down uh, the use of that vaccine even after the pause was lifted. So right now we're really just kind of trudging along, getting people vaccinated, but I don't think we're going to see major jumps for some time. It's going to take some time to accrue uh, a large proportion of the population vaccinated, but this 12 to 15 approval will boost that, uh, that number significantly. People who've gotten vaccinated have had the experience of the second shot, and everyone always calls each other up saying, how are you doing? Because the side effects have gotten to be pretty well known. Are the side effects, theoretically, for, say, a 12-year-old child going to be worse, given the fact that the stronger the immune system, it seems, the stronger the reactions? It's hard to make a one-to-one -one comparison that way. What we know from the, the phase three clinical trial data in that age group was that the side effects were not considered to be very severe. And, and there are people who get this vaccine and have no side effects. And it's hard to know exactly where a 12 to 15 year old would fall. But I know that's something that the CDC panel is going to look at because remember, children are not likely to have severe disease. Children are not likely to be the major spreader. So that's going to be part of the risk benefit of calculation that both the FDA and the CDC do. And, and that's important to do because vaccines you know, have a risk benefit trade off that you have to look at in each specific age group. When you talk about the risk benefit weighing that we're doing every day, there is a transition going on. When do health officials say enough high risk individuals have been vaccinated that the COVID pandemic can be downgraded to a bad flu and we can go about our lives. What I think will have to happen is we're going to have to get closer to 40% of the U.S. population totally vaccinated. And I say 40% because that's where we saw precipitous declines in Israel, which is a much more highly vaccinated country, but they still haven't reached herd immunity either. But their percent positivity of tests is less than 1%. So I do think once we get more people vaccinated and you see cases plummet, uh, maybe less than 10,000 or 10,000, you're going to see just kind of a whole rethinking of how we come up with a better risk calculation, how we how we live with this virus, because it's not going to go to zero. That's a, that's a foregone conclusion. It's not going to happen. But we will get to a point where this is something that has lost the ability to cause serious disease at the right. rate that it can.